Hello, good day. Once again, this is Arvin Alonso demonstrating to you basics of IT application tools and this time in Microsoft Excel, particularly under the Formulas tab. I have some questions. Have you ever tried defining your the names of your cells or range of cells? Or were you able to manage all of these defined names? Or were you able to audit your formulas, looking, for example, tracing the precedence or dependence of your formulas? Or have you ever set your calculation op options? For example, you encountered this certain problem. You applied the formula, but the cell where you set the formula did not compute. What will you do? In this video presentation, I will demonstrate to you how to define names, how to audit formulas, and how to set calculations, calculation options. So let's get ready. Now, I have here four worksheets, settings, data, DTR summary, and report. Uh, in my setup, for example, I formatted like this. It appears like it's an information system where uh, the areas where you can place your data values are appearing like a text box okay so how do we do that it's simple you just need to format the fill color uh, by the way all of this should have been uh, with fill color gray and then the area where you need to type values you change the fill color for example into white and then uh, change the border say for example you would like to have a thick border for some areas in this area for example i have this okay and then you can change again the border into thin one and then continue with the other area okay so that's how to uh, format like it appears as a text box but anyway let's go to how we define names okay the number of working days is defined as WD so you can define your name here okay say for example I have here association use I would like to name it ASD enter it's how to define name or you can define names in the formulas tab using the define name command and then CA uh, CLA for example clothing allowance okay so it's easier actually to define names in the name box so I will name this one uh, an a n l a n a -N -A, anniversary allowance and i will define uh, my calamity allowance as c l c a a okay uh, in my data i have here this uh, sets of columns uh, by the way let me just introduce to you uh, a certain data validation where it limits the birth date into uh, not accepting birth date with a computation of uh, say for example 20 years uh, less than 20 years old because uh, some some of course in any organization normally they don't employ uh, or hire uh, employees who are not yet graduate or who are still in their college days for example and normally 20 years old some actually are not yet graduate of college degree so in this area my data validation actually runs like this so I used custom and I placed a formula equals year frac h4 what is h4 the birth date of my first set of data comma today so take note that the year frac 
will actually compute the difference between two dates. In this situation, uh, H4 and the date today. And then, uh, I compared the computation of the year frac greater than or equal to 20. Mean to say, uh, it will only accept a birth date with a computation of year frac 20 years old and above. Okay? So that when you enter, for example, 12, 12, uh, 2010, enter, okay? It says here the value does not match the data validation restrictions defined on the uh, for this cell. Why? Because the computation of age is still uh, 9 years old. In the same way, in my date hired, actually, I have another data validation here. But I use date between 12-15-1970. For example, the organization started only in 1970 and today. Okay? So, you cannot hire tomorrow. Okay? You cannot hire an employee before... Uh, the organi organization existed. So that's why I had this one. So this is my computation actually for my uh, age using the year frac again, but I included INT function so that it will only show the numeric value because if there's no INT function here, only year frac, then it will have the you may, uh, decimal values so you notice I only change here but automatically all the other values change why? because this is a table now, say for example I have here my rate of data in my DTR summary I just have the number of days work and number of minutes late for example so that when I will compute for the tardiness and absences deduction then I'll just get it here. Under my report, for example, I have here uh, these columns. Now, going back, in my data, I have my rate per day. Okay. And in my uh, settings, I have the number of working days named as WD. In my data, uh, if you try to look at it, I have a rate here. Rate is all about this column. Don't worry. Whenever you add a new row, a new data set, a new employee, automatically this next cell would be part of the rate. Okay? So, here in my report, for example, uh, I did not use any more cell addresses uh, using A1, B1, or settings, exclamation point, C1. Instead, I automatically make use of their names, defined names. And that is easier, for example, so because you don't need to look, oh, what's the ad cell address? I, I forgot the cell address. So again, you review. But if you name, if you define names, then it's easier for you to create formulas. Say, for example, here, uh, clothing allowance is equals CLA. Enter. So, you notice, you already have the value. Anniversary allowance equals ANA. Calamity allowance is CAA. Then, you just copy and paste. Okay? So, that's uh, using the defined names. For example, in my association use equals ASD. So, you have the association use. But you notice, in my rate per day, because it belongs to a table, automatically it gets the next value. So, that for example, I will change this one into 2000. And look at the computation now. It becomes 44,000. Why? Because 2,000 times 22 working days. That is what we set here. So that whenever you change this one, 
automatically the computation also changes here. Okay? But uh, when you make use of uh, these values, uh, say for example, rate belongs to a table, as much as possible, they belong to the same row. So I uh, my first set of data here is in row 4. In my data set, it's also in row 4. Okay? So that's how to define names. Now, what if you would like to manage the defined names? You just go to the name manager. All of your defined names here are actually uh, listed. For example, table 1. You can rename this one if you want to. Okay? Edit. And then rename as my table 1 actually is my data. Employees. Okay. Oh. Incorrect. Why? Because it doesn't accept the dash value. Okay. So I have data employees. Okay. So you can rename also all of this if you want to. Now, if you want to delete certain names, then you just click the delete uh, button. Select the name cell or range of cell, then delete. Okay, let's close this one. That's how to manage your defined names. Let's go to the formula auditing. In accounting, uh, it is very important to audit values. Okay, that's why you have in, in the government sector, we have the commission on audit. In Excel, we also have auditing of formulas. So, actually, we have IT audit. Okay? So, here, uh, say for example, I have this formula. I can audit how this formula works. I'll ca I can trace the precedence. You notice that this formula gets it, its values from B, C, D, E, F, pointing to the gross value. So I can remove the arrow. How do I have the precedent? Say, for example, this one. Trace precedent. Oh, it points to the uh, gross value. I will have anniversary. Trace precedent. Where was it used? Okay. So again, it points to the uh, gross value. For example, this one, concatenate and so on and so forth. Trace precedence. It shows that it comes from another worksheet. Okay? So, that, uh, that is actually coming from C, D, E. Using the concatenate function. I will remove the arrows. Okay. You can also show the formulas that you applied in the entire worksheet. When I click show formula, you notice that all formulas will appear. So it's easier to check your formulas. Then you just uh, uh, click this one if you want to go back to the normal values. Okay. You can also check some errors if you want to. Actually, there are no errors in this area. Okay. And then you can evaluate your formula. Say, for example, I would like to evaluate the formula for the gross pay. Click. Then you notice here, sum B4 to F4. Click evaluate. It shows you uh, 25, 5. Okay. That's how to evaluate. And lastly, okay, how to have your calculations options. It's possible that you have a, uh, an option into manual so that when there are new values, say for example, I will change this one into 2000. This value did not change automatically. Why? Because the calculation options is set to manual. So if you encounter this problem, uh, uh, the value did not change when the, the source, the origin of uh, the data value for the computation was changed. 
uh, better check your calculation options. Now, in that case, you can click the calculate now. Okay. Or calculate sheet for the entire worksheet. So, we are normally setting the calculation options into automatic. So, take note of all these things. You can define your names. It's easier to create formulas when you have defined your names. You can audit your formulas, trace the precedence or even the dependence. You can show the formulas in your entire worksheet if you would like to review the formulas that you applied. Again, say for example here, I made use of concatenate. I made use of W D times rate equals CLA equals ANA and so on and so forth. Okay, so that's showing formulas. Of course, it's very important to check your calculation options. It's automatic, automatic except for data tables. Okay, say for example, the data, data tables means like in, in this area. So even if you change the birthday, for example, the date hired, it is not automatic when it is set to automatic except for data tables. And it, when it's set to uh, manual, norm, normally all the values where the formulas are will not automatically change even if you change the source or the data where it gets the computation. So I hope you learned something new in this video presentation and thank you. I hope you're going to apply all of these learnings. God bless everyone.